is to teach the moon mostly to children, but this will, these things will work for anybody. Uh, whenever I give a presentation on the moon, I have two moon posters that I use, and I like to have them hanging up. And if there's a moon globe available or lunar charts in the library at the observatory, I, I like to use whatever's available so people have stuff that they can look at and use when they have questions to illustrate what they might not know how to describe. So that works really well. Uh, this one also has really nice descriptions of the phases of the moon and answers many questions. Uh, I have a model that I've made of the Earth and the moon. As I, models are real effective in showing relationships. Uh, this is just a softball that I painted. And the reason I painted it half black is just as a reminder that in space, the Earth is only half illuminated at any one time. The other side's always in darkness. And I also built this to try to, a long time ago, to try to understand the phases of, of things. So the moon is painted half black, too. And the string, well, this is just an ordinary softball, which is four inches in diameter. And this is a rubber ball that I found at a hobby shop or a toy store that's only an inch across. And that's pretty much the relationship. Ideally, this would be an inch and one-tenth, but it's easier to find a ball that's one inch. These two you can find almost in any store. And the distance apart at this relative size is almost exactly 10 feet. So I made this string at 10 feet. And if you stretch out the two, I don't know if it's possible to get them both in the shot, but uh, they're 10 feet apart and you can see the relative distance as well. So this is easy to make. And and it's effective. It is very effective. It gets that information across like that. I mean, you could say the moon is so much bigger than the Earth and that it's 240,000 miles away, but you can, with seeing it works very well. Let's see. Oh, here's another moon globe I have. Um, I'm telling kids that only one side of the moon faces the Earth the whole time, that it's not spinning around, that we didn't know what the other side of it looked like until we were able to send spacecraft there to photograph it. This globe was made during that time, that early exploration time, when the rangers and the surveyors, before the landings on the moon, and before the moon was completely mapped. So there's large portions on the back here that are blank. And, uh, Hold that one more time. Hold it up a little bit more. Right there. It's a blank. What's anyway, this? this is a nice artifact from that time. And I borrowed it from somebody many years ago, and I forgot who. And if you see in this video, and it really belongs to you, know that it's been put to good use over the years, and I'd be glad to give you it back. So. <laughs> oh, I'd like to do you. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Oh, here's another thing I made once. This is getting kind of damaged, but... It's a moon that you can hold up. What does the other side look like? We don't know. Or we didn't know. It was just fun. Anyway. <laughs> what else do I do? Um, uh, when describing to kids the uh, why it's why uh, features on the moon stand out in sharper relief when they're on the Terminator because the, the sun is just rising in that place and the shadows are much longer. So, well, anyone who's looked at the moon through a telescope knows it. But what I've done is I've created a crater, and all I've done is um, I took a piece of styrofoam, and I... If you hold it about there, I'll... Well, okay, so this is, this, see, you can't really see it very well. But you? we're going to use this light, but let me get up by some But that helps me illustrate my point here. I'm going someplace. Hold it where? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay. Middle, 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 right? middle, middle. Yeah. Good. That's what I'm trying to say. Please stop moving the light around for right now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. There is a crater in this styrofoam. And it, what it is is I just dug it out about an inch deep all the way around. And you can see when the sun's shining straight on it, Matt is holding a light out there. There's not much shadow. It might even be hard to tell if it's even there. Um, but... If the sun was just rising, well, then that light source would be over here, <laughs> near the That's horizon. Great. And suddenly, you can see it really well. You can see that it's bumpy on the bottom, and you can see that this side is lit up and that side isn't. And uh, anyway, that's why okay. things on the Terminator are like that. So that, that helps to illustrate that. What else?
else in my God. And, and normally I wouldn't have somebody like Matt holding the light for me, so I use this flashlight right here, this high beam flashlight. And you can do the same thing if you get close enough. So that's at your belly button. <laughs> 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 so there's that. What else do I do? Well, um, there is a theory to the moon's origin that it, it, it accreted out of material that was blown off into space when the early molten proto-Earth was struck by a Mars-sized object. And I discovered one day that the relationship between a ping ball, a pong ball, and a baseball is just that same spatial or size relationship. So uh, I carry around a baseball and a ping pong ball. When I'm talking about that, I can pull them out. See, that's, that's what it was. And it hit a glancing blow. These are fun to have around. But the other part would be the crater demonstration. And for that, we'll need a different configuration. That sounds like a natural, natural break. break. When teaching about the phases of the moon, uh, this is something that I read in some book. I said, and how many of these aren't like, original ideas? I'm just, yeah. it, there's stuff that I borrowed, some of the stuff I've made up. But uh, this is the one I definitely got from Teacher's Manual somewhere. Astronomical Society of the Pacific has it in theirs. Yeah, that's what it was. It was in uh, uh, the universe at your fingertips. Yeah, we have that violation of material that they put out for Project Astro. And we have that in the observatory. I've got it in my, my show. In the library. That's <laughs> <laughs> a great resource, especially if you're teaching kids. The universe at your fingertips, available through the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. Many, many good things, including this one. And what you, what you do with this is, this would be the moon. And you would imagine, you hold it at arm's length, and your head is the Earth. So your eyes are on the Earth, and you're looking at the moon. Uh, then you'd have to, you have to get a lamp, you know, a, light, a single light source in the room. If you've got light coming from other directions, it's kind of hard. But here's Matt, it, it ate me again. Um, so right now, that, that is obviously the sun, and I am the Earth, and the moon is eclipsing the sun right now. Actually, I'm make sure it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a new moon right now. And, and as the moon rotates around, you can see that there's one side of the star from ball that is much brighter in a crescent shape right now. And that more and more of that lit up portion becomes visible as, I, as the moon moves through its wonderful path. And the phases of the moon just really become obvious mm -hmm. with that demonstration. Word of warning, though, is it, I, I've never had any success doing this with groups of kids larger than about four at the same time. But the big group of kids, it's just, it, it tends to get out of hand. Maybe you're more skilled than I am. Um, it depends on the age of this good kid, I would think, somewhat. Yeah. Little kids especially need someone to help yeah, them. Yeah, it see. seems to work because you need this bright light, and you need it to be the one light source, and you try to do it in the semi-dark, and, and um, a lot of kids, it gets out of control. <laughs> anyway, um, um, so, okay, this is a demonstration that, that I do to show how craters form on the moon. That's really fun and popular. It has been. Um, <clears throat> it involves making actual craters in flowers, so. If you're not careful, it can make a mess. What I start off with is by spreading out a sheet of bisqueen, this piece of plastic that I have on the ground. And then I have this little picture frame here. And I'll put that in the middle of the paper. And then in the middle of the plastic sheet. And this will create a space here where the flower won't spill out. Of. I have this bucket, two gallon bucket here. And I'll put some flour in there and just dump it into the center like this. And I spread it out it's in the frame. It's not necessary to take it all the way to the edge. 
what's more important is that you have some space in the middle where the flower is relatively deep. And depending on how many kids are going to participate, you need a wide enough area so they'll all have a place to create their own crater. That's about what we're after. It's about maybe an inch, an inch and a half deep in the middle. And then what I'll do is I'll take this jar of moon dust. It says moon dust right there on the jar. Now, whenever I pull this out, the kids look at me and they look puzzled and they say, someone's going to ask, is that really moon dust? And uh, that's always fun because they try to figure it out for themselves whether it could possibly be. They say, well, you know, what do you think? There's only a few hundred pounds of that that we have, and maybe it's the only few hundred pounds we'll ever get. And all the scientists of the world have to share it to do experiments on it and learn things from. Do you think they'd really give any of it to me to do this? Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just, this takes a little technique here. I've tried it with different shakers and things, but really this works the best. This is really chocolate cocoa powder, which they figure out really soon because it smells like it. And the tricky part is not just to get them not to eat it. Um, but I just let it sift through my fingers and I shake it out over the flour. So I get a very thin layer on the top of cocoa. You don't necessarily have to cover all of the whiteness of the flour, but you don't want to make it too thick either. Just as thin as you can. probably good enough. Now we've created a lunar surface. And as, as most astronomers know, uh, craters are formed by impacts. And we can create an impact here on the surface of the moon. Usually start off with a golf ball. And by dropping it into the flower, I'm going to go ahead and zoom down. Oops. Why don't you wait until I drop the okay. ball and then zoom in on our day? Okay. That's a pretty good one. You got a good shot of it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, at this point, they all go, ooh! Mm -hmm. And you can point out <coughs> a lot of uh, features that are present on craters on the moon. And what I like to do is point out at this point that you can see these things without having a telescope. If you have a pair of binoculars and a way to make them steady, that's all the optical equipment you need to see a lot of these things. And most everybody has a pair of binoculars somewhere at home. So I encourage them to take them outside and look at the moon. Uh, but you can see that the, the flower, of course, the lighter material was underneath and it it has been thrown out of this hole where, where the golf ball impacted. And that most of it didn't get very far, piled up around the edge. And that this type of feature can be observed on the moon as well. And that's why that most of it didn't get very far. And that all the material that came out is called ejecta. And around the, very close to the crater, it's completely white. It's covered with ejectus. That would be the ejecta blanket. And that where it streaks out away from the crater, those are the ejecta rays. And sometimes even you'll see the sides of one of these slump down a little bit after you pull the golf ball out. And that kind of feature can also be seen on the moon. You can also, once you've got your first crater, take a, uh, a flashlight and demonstrate how it's easier to see it when the sun is rising if it were overhead, like I did with, uh, with the styrofoam earlier. Uh, so, at this point, I also like to point out that, that asteroids that struck the moon were moving much faster than a golf ball, and that when they hit, they're moving so fast that they, they, um, they explode. They give up all their energy as heat energy, and, 
vaporizes the rock, and that's why it leaves a circular crater, because it's like a bomb went off right there. And to demonstrate how fast something is moving changes how much energy it, it has, I have I have this little slingshot here, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> a little container, and I have these little plastic magnetic balls. I think you could use any, it doesn't matter that they're magnetic, they just happen to be, uh, but you could use any two balls that were the same size, the same weight, the same density to, to illustrate this. And I start off by just dropping one of the balls into the flower. And it makes a crater, and there's a little ejecta blanket you can see, but it's nothing really spectacular. But by taking the same ball and firing it through a slingshot... Hold on a second, I'm sorry. Where's my focus? I want to take it off. Seems like it's not focused. There we go. Okay. Okay, where's where's where the other one? I can pause. <laughs> well, you're getting ready to okay, well, show me. Oh, sorry. And I made the first crater, and now what I want to do is I have these little plastic slingshots. I cannot remember where I got them, uh, but I'll just pull back a little bit further. And I like to remind the children not to try this at home. That I am a trained professional. There's always some kid who wants to use this one. <laughs> and so... And then they really go, ooh. Now they really go, ooh, because they could see, oh my, look. You say, well, imagine if it was moving at 50,000 miles an hour. What do you think it happened then? So at this point, they, they all want to try it. I have some toys to make it interesting, too. Well, it's not interesting. Of course, it's very interesting, right? And I have a little lunar module. And I pretend that it comes down for a landing. And I explain why the astronauts visit the crater, visited the craters to begin with. They tried to get to the rim of the larger craters because there would be material from much deeper down. And, you know, why that was a good place to be. We sing a song about uh, building a hotel on the moon and the Big Bang Band. So I have this little uh, Monopoly hotel. <laughs> I like to put it on the moon. And... I give it a little protective air bubble. Uh, we have astronauts that can walk on the moon. We have a little moon buggy, a rover that can drive around. Them. It's just sort of fun. Here's another one. I know the If there's time, and if the kids are under a reasonable amount of control, they always want to get their hands in this, and it's always sort of semi, sort of spinning out of control because everyone wants to touch. So at, at some point I start passing around the ball and I let everybody make a crater. Um, but then I carry around other things. I irregularly shape rocks, uh, different sized balls. Well, here's now we have some meteorites. Here's a ball from a mouse back door. And as a matter of fact, in my pocket, I happen to have an actual meteorite, which uh, we just purchased, but it will be fun to pass it around. Let's go ahead and hold it so in that light. people can light. see Oop. a meteorite. Good. Cool. Anyway, these are fun things to do. Uh, the other thing to remember about this particular project is that it creates a mess. Uh, and I have a technique for cleaning this up. Uh, first, I clear everything out. And how many kids want to touch it? Every, Every single one of them wants to touch it. <laughs> and sometimes when it's the last set of kids, and I say, okay, you can put your hands in it just at once, and they all go, boom! <laughs> oh, that's where the big ejector rays come from. Yeah! And uh, it is a lot of fun, which is why I carry around my dust buster. 